Hey guys, in this video I show you how to use Excel to plot a line of best fit with your average data. I also show you how to make error bars and max and min slope possible lines. So to start, you'll see the only data I have open in my Excel spreadsheet are my average volume uh, calculations, only the averages, and my average mass values for mass values for each of the ball bearings. You never plot trial data. Never. Only plot averages. I also have my volume uncertainty calculations here, and I have the average mass uncertainty value, which came from the biggest range in my trial data divided by two. So I will go to insert. Uh, we want a scatter plot with the dots only, and I can go to select data up here, or I can right click and go to select data, and I will, sorry, cancel, under legend entry series, go to add, the series name will be ball bearing density, my x values, these need to be my independent variable. In this case, I'm choosing the volume to be my independent variable. So I go to equals, I click the equal sign, and I highlight my average volume values. Good. Now for my series Y values, I click this back, I delete the bracketed one, I keep the equal sign, and my average masses are considered my dependent variable. Okay, so I click OK and OK, and you can see I have the ball bearing density with these uh, plotted values. We want to add axis titles. This is a must for IB uh, or any graph you make in this class. So the vertical, sorry, the horizontal axis will be titled uh, volume, and the units need to be included. These are millimeters cubed. I can't use the word function. Uh, control shift plus here so I'm just using this the superscript symbol and in this case I will the vertical axis is labeled uh, average mass these are in uh, grams or sorry milligrams and let me re rewrite this this should be average volume okay let's add a trend line so I, I click the graph and to the right is a green uh, plus symbol for chart elements, and I will add a trend line. Go to this black arrow to the right, and we'll go to more options. Underneath the trend line, you want to click these vertical bars, trend line options, and you scroll down to display equation on chart. This is the only equation you need. And you can see I would have no y-intercept, which is good because having a y-intercept means there's some systematic error. If there is a y-intercept, not a big deal. You could always explain that in your data analysis section of your report. I'm going to show you how to add error bars now. So I will click the green plus symbol again, and we will go to error bars, and I will click this black arrow to the right for more options. We will start looking, we will start with vertical error bars instead of the horizontal ones. So under error bar options, I'll click this black arrow and I will go to the Y error bars. Yours might come up like this. So right now I'll be editing my vertical error bars, which is which will be represented by the uncertainty I have in the mass values. So under the green uh, vertical bars, I will scroll down to custom, specify value, and in this case my positive, I'll be up 0.02 milligrams, and then my negative error will be 0.02 as well. So I click OK. You can see these, these make the error bars quite small. Now I want to add or edit my horizontal error bars. So again, I click, click the green plus sign, error bars, click the black arrow to the right here. More options. I will now change from the X, from the Y error bars, make sure I'm in the X error bars, and I will go to a custom value, specify. My positive error comes from these volume uncertainties, and they will correspond with the correct uh, plots on the graph, and my negative error values will be, again, this row of data. So I click, hold, drag, click OK, and you can see that I have really huge uh, horizontal error bars, but there's way less mass uncertainty, which should make sense. Now we are going to add max and min slope possible lines. So this will be for my max slope 
uh, so to change your max slope possible lines, you will need to click an entry, go to equals, you find the smallest mass value, this one, and to this value we will subtract the uncertainty. Okay, this will be my y value, my x value is the corresponding average volume. For the max slope, I now will look at the biggest mass value. To it, I will add the mass uncertainty. And the corresponding x volume that goes with this is this 452.5. So watch again, to get the max slope possible, I subtract the mass uncertainty from my lowest data point, and I added the mass uncertainty to my highest data point. So I will highlight this, sorry. I will click on my graph, right click and go to select data. I wanna add now a legend. This will be called max slope possible. My series X value is equal to uh, these mass values or volume measurements. My series Y values are these two. So it's a line that only contains two points which is fine. Okay, so I'm in the mass, max slope possible and I click OK. I will go here, my trend line, more options, and I'm going to add a trend line for the max slope possible. And it is in orange. And I will go to my trend line options, these green vertical bars, and I will display this equation on the chart. And to differentiate this equation from my best fit equation, I'm gonna put just, I want to edit this box. And I'm gonna change the color to orange. I wanna have a border that is orange. Excuse me, let me see. A solid line border, that's orange, and there you go. Now you can see that is my max slope possible line. So we will now make a min slope possible line. So to do that, I go to my smallest uh, y value again, and this time I add my mass uncertainty to that smallest value. I will go to my largest y data point. This is my biggest mass value, and I will subtract from that. You'll see how this will shift the slope. I keep my x values the same, so it's still 16.7 here and it is still the corresponding 452.5 here. So I go equals and I click that. Okay, now I again right click on the chart, go to select data, and I'm going to add a legend, and this is called min slope possible. My series X values are my volume measurements. Those are my independent variables, or that's my independent variable. My series Y values are the min slope possible line I made. Okay, and I click OK. Now I will go to, again, trend line, this black arrow to the right, more options, and this time I'm going to add a trend line for the min slope possible line. So I highlight that, OK. And under this format trend line, I go to the trend line options, these green vertical bars, and I scroll down to display equation on chart. So there I can see this equation. And so to, distinguish, to distinguish it from my um, line of best fit or my max slope max uh, my max slope possible line I will click this equation for my min slope possible I will go to these options this paint can and I will have a border that is a solid line and this color I want it to be gray which corresponds to the color of that trend line so now you can see I can even add a legend here which will help distinguish these uh, three equations. Okay, now when it comes to representing my uncertainty, I'm sorry, my density, my density comes from the slope of this mass versus volume graph. My density for these ball bearings is 8.03 plus or minus, so I'm going to insert symbols. Again, the plus or minus symbol is under Latin 1 supplement, plus or minus, insert. 
Now I need to do my uncertainty. The slope uncertainty is the range of the two extreme slope values divided by two. In this case, my max slope possible is 8.0. Is 8 301 and I will subtract 8.0299. Notice when I want to do, anytime I want to do an equation uh, in Excel, I have to click an equal sign first. Now, oops, excuse me, let me delete this. Okay, now I will take this range in my slope values, the difference between the max and the min, to get my to finish the slope uncertainty. I take that range and again I divide by two. So I took this, divide by two, and this gives me my slope uncertainty. So it is 8.03 plus or minus a really small uncertainty in my slope, plus or minus 0.001. E to the negative 4, 0, 1. So I have a very small uncertainty in my slope, which should make sense. And to make these consistent, I can just add decimal places, 8.0312. So now I have four decimal places of precision, and this, uh, this is the density for my ball bearings, which is, in, which is measured in units of milligrams per millimeter cubed. And this is what would go into my Word document. For places where error bars are too small to be seen, in my Word document, I can type error bars too small to show. And that's perfectly acceptable in future labs in case your uncertainty is really small. I hope you found this video helpful. You will really rely on this for every graph you make in this class. Study well and best of luck. Thanks for watching.